Anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> I'd like to thank you all very much for allowing me to be general evaluator this evening, and I'd particularly like to uh, thank Glenn and uh, Dorothea for uh, the administration and the welcome I got this evening. It's very nice. To get on to the my main business, which is the evaluation of the evaluators, Alistair. If I hadn't known this was your first evaluation session, uh, I wouldn't know. I don't know anybody here, um, so if I didn't have the introductions to what the speeches people were doing, or what evaluations they were doing, or what sort of standard, I wouldn't have known. So congratulations, it was a very good uh, evaluation. Um, one of the things I would recommend is you, you take your notes with you. I'm not too good, I can't see very well, so I have to keep going like this, and there's no excuse for you to do the same. <laughs> um, and I thought you had a, you made a very good use of the stage, the way you moved around and you used your hands very well as well. I thought it was very good. Elaine. It's the first time I've ever known anybody to prepare uh, to be an evaluator before the meeting by uh, ringing Dorothea and checking <laughs> on some matters. I've never heard of that before, so that's a good plus point. I thought you were very good with your eye contact um, particularly with your target speaker as well, but also looking at the rest of the audience as well. One thing I did notice with um, this meeting was the objectives of the speeches were not read out before uh, the speeches. I don't know, I'm used to that at the club uh, that we are at and, and when we were in Doha as well. Uh, so I don't know whether that's um, mm -hmm. something you could think about doing or not. I, know, I found that a little bit difficult to follow. And I thought you have great red boots as well. I thought they were very nice. <laughs> Tudor. I thought uh, you were very dramatic evaluation and your voice modulation expressions were excellent. I thought you could have made better use of the stage, unlike me, as well. Uh, you were shuffling backwards and forwards, and I, and I found that a little off putting. Perhaps it's. Uh, with the experience that uh, you relax a little bit more, perhaps it's a sign of nervousness. But I thought you were good, use of wit, and you had an uh, engaging manner with the audience. You could judge that by the amount of laughter that went on to evaluation, and they were laughing with you, not at you, I can assure you. <laughs> Richard, I thought the way you moved forward and you were closest to the audience was a very good technique to use, it was, it was warm and engaging for people. You were, you were very good recommendations for your speaker, you were very balanced, you gave recommendations as well as a lot of commendations. And I think that's useful, sometimes people are frightened to, uh, they think it's criticising, but we won't improve if we don't know what our areas are for improvements, and I thought you, you brought those out nicely as well. I thought you had excellent use of hand movements as well. Very, very good. Uh, my only recommendation to you would be to enter the evaluators competition. <laughs> so I think you do very well. You're an excellent evaluator. Uh, Mark? Where's Mark? Sorry. Um, so you took your glasses off at full. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. It's very difficult to do the table topics evaluation. I know it's, it's trying to cram everything in very quickly, but I noticed that you were able to not only commend people, but to give recommendations as well, and to to be fairly equal in, in time to everybody. I thought it was, was excellent the way you did that. I think you need to think about the crutch words that you use. I'm terrible, I use the word whom, are, etc. quite a lot. And I think you, you need to, perhaps if, if you've been recorded, you could perhaps play that back and see. I think something we need to look at. Um, I like the good use of the words. I've never heard of a silkworm sock before, but I thought it was really nice. <laughs> good use of words and humour. With regards to the meeting itself, as uh, Glenn, in his introduction, the first introduction I got, said, we, my wife and I belong to Wokingham speakers, and their meetings are, s are slightly different, so you tend to notice what some of the differences are. Uh, and in the Middle East as well, it's different again. We were members in a club in uh, Doha. Uh, one of the differences is uh, in the Doha club, 
the sergeants at arms would get up at the beginning of the meeting and again we do that at working with speakers and I think that's quite good particularly with the emergency procedures and telling guests where the toilets are for example I found it quite difficult to find them but I found something out in the car park so that was okay <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing they do very differently in the Middle East is the sergeant arms tells you before the meeting you're not allowed to talk about sex religion or politics we don't do it over here, we don't do it at our club, and I think we miss a great opportunity to insult people, <laughs> and people up, and to set up a good fight out in that car park later. Uh, another thing, we'll just, I shouldn't have said that. Another thing you don't seem to have here is um and ah counter. The grammarian uh, at the Woken Speakers also counts the ums and ahs. I'm very good at umming and ahring, and I think it's very good that you have that pointed out to you. I don't mind. If somebody says I've done 27 ums and 15 ahs in a thing, in a speech, because I think it's a, it's a way to improve, um, and you don't do that here. I notice. Again, I, I found it a little strange with not having the evaluators at the beginning of the speeches introducing the speeches and saying what the objectives are. Um, I, I found it a little difficult to follow some of the speeches. Well, this person's talking about something. I didn't really quite know where they were going to in some way, so I found it a little, little bit rudderless. A few uh, suggestions uh, I found uh, that weren't quite um, as we you know, would expect. There were no spare chairs at the back for latecomers, so people were coming in, dragging heavy chairs in, and I thought it was a little bit disturbing for one or two of the speakers. I thought it was good that you have the Toastmasters magazines at the back. I don't know if any of you are aware there is an app that's available for Toastmasters magazines. It's really, really good. You can just download the uh, latest magazines or you can get the PDF on the TMI website as well, which I think is a lot better than having the paper copy personally. Some people would prefer that. The, also, some of the agendas and, and voting slips, we didn't get any voting slips uh, this evening. I think perhaps something you could pay attention to. And lastly, I, I'd like to just to reiterate what somebody said about the, the table topics. I've never seen two guests dominate a table topic session before. I've never seen anybody pick their own table topic. I'm not changing the question, but it's certainly something I'm going to try the next time. <laughs> and also, Ben, I'd like to congratulate you as well. I, I felt like Simon Cowell seeing Susan Boyle for the first time. <laughs> the other thing I found a little bit different was that people actually volunteered for table topics before the table topic session. We used to, what Alex Ferguson would call squeaky bum time, that <laughs> nobody knows and it's, yeah, yeah. it's your go. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think that probably brings a, bit, a little bit more excitement to, to table topics. I don't know whether you do that every time or not. Yeah. Um, but once again, I'd like to thank you very, very much for allowing me to be a general evaluator this evening. And um, thank you very much. Thank you.